In the given quadratic function, a and c are constants. The graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane is a parabola that opens upward and has a vertex at the point hk, where h and k are constants. If k is less than 0 and f of negative 9 equals f of 3, which of the following must be true? Okay, so we have this parabola here, and we are told that this parabola opens upwards. So, which means the vertex of this parabola is the minimum, and this parabola opens upward. So it'll look something like this. Okay, and we're also told that k, which is the y-coordinate of the vertex, is less than zero. Which means the vertex should be somewhere down where the y-axis in the negative y-axis. And f of negative 9 equals f of 3. Okay, this should tell us the x-coordinate of the vertex. So what this is saying is that our parabola on the xy plane, say it looks something like this, it's telling us that at an x-coordinate of negative 9 and an x-coordinate of 3, the function, say these two points, have the same y value. The value of f of x at negative 9 and 3 is the same. And a parabola has a property that for for equal y values at two points on a parabola, they are equidistant from the vertex of the parabola. That means an x value of negative 9 is equid at on the parabola is equidistant from the vertex. So the distance from the vertex, the horizontal distance to negative 9 is the same as the distance from the vertex to 3. And the value that is in between negative 9 and 3 is is negative 3. So that means the vertex of this graph is at an x value of negative 3. And h is equal to the x coordinate of the vertex. So that means x is equal to uh, h is equal to negative 3. So that's the vertex of the graph. And we can write the f formula for a quadratic in vertex form. So vertex form looks like this. So we have a x minus h whole squared plus b. So that's the vertex form of a graph. This is, Actually, this b can be the k, the k value, where h and k are the vertices of are the coordinates of the vertex of the graph. So we know that f of x equals a times x. So h here is equal to negative 3. So this becomes a positive 3 whole squared plus k. OK, so now let's expand out this uh, square term. So this will become a times x squared plus 6ax plus 9a plus k. Okay, and then we can we can see that the ax squared is still there, and that this term right here is the coefficient, the 6a is the coefficient of the x term. And we know from the formula that they gave us that the coefficient of the x term is 4. So that means 6a has to equal 4. So this will give us the value of a. So that means a is equal to 2 over 3. OK. And then we can also find some more information. So here, 9a, a is just a constant. So 9a is just a constant. And k is just a constant. That's just the y value of the vertex. In 9a plus k should equal c, because c is the sum of all constants in the original equation. So 9a plus k has to equal c, because this quadratic is the same as this one. We just wrote it in vertex form. 
So 9a plus k equals equals c. So then let's plug in the value of a equals two thirds into this equation. So nine times two thirds is just equal to six. Then plus k is equal to c. So this means that k is equal to c minus six. Okay, and we knew that k is less than zero. So for k to be less than zero, we need to choose a c value accordingly so that k is less than zero. And really, c needs to be any value that is less than negative six. Or not ne less than negative six, just less than six. Because at a c value of six, six minus six is zero. So anything less than six, say five, five minus six is negative one. This makes k less than zero. So anything less than six will give us a k value that is less than zero, which means c needs to be anything less than six. Okay, and but values less than six can either be positive or negative. They can be values, say, four or negative 10. Both of them still work. So this means that c can be either positive or negative. So then we can, so that means we can rule out this um, answer A here. Because answer A is saying that C is always less than zero, which means C is always negative. But we can see here that C can be positive numbers, like four. Uh, so C can be anything less than six, so it can be equal to some positive numbers. So we can rule out answer A here, or the first answer. And then the second answer is saying that a has to be greater than or equal to 1. But we found that a is equal to 2 thirds, which is less than 1. So we can rule out the second answer choice here. So none of these were true, which means that neither 1 or 2 are correct. So the correct answer is answer choice D.